I'm going to go ahead and upload this onto Facebook and YouTube. Um, but, okay, so like I've been saying, <clears throat> the way we used to do it, the way we did it, was we actually used a vacuum seal system for the concrete. Big, huge steel plates, riveted, would go plunk, plunk, and then they would suck the air out. And you use a double chamber system to basically, um, I think the top, it would have an airflow. So basically it's two walls, pretty much, all sealed. And then they would suck all the air out. And that would make the plates go like, you know, like, you know, and it'd make the, the concrete three times as strong or 10 times as strong. Uh, basically, it sucked all the water out, all the air out. And basically what you get is you get this really hard concrete, man. And sometimes they would even add asbestos fibers into it, which would make it really hard. Um, because it bridged the gaps even more or something like that. They, they, they did some, some, some really cool stuff like asbestos fibers being poured inside the concrete and also the rebar, um, or metal. They, um, back in the, in the way old day, days in year 900 and year 700 was well, because I was so friggin' wealthy and because I had so much metal, I could pay for it. the best. And what the best meant was basically vacuum seal, uh, special special steel, riveted steel things, just like the Titanic. In fact, the reason why I knew I could build the Titanic is because I had been building suction vacuum plates for the dams. So, because a ship isn't that much different than a vacuum plate, really. So, anyway, though, but these great big huge steel plates the size of a dam, like a lot of those dams, when you see them, um, what you don't realize is that there was a steel plate that big on each side, double chambered with an air gap on, on the top and a, vac and a vacuum pump and a vacuum steam engine going <laughs> and, it, and, and also a way, a mechanism for that, for those plates to squeeze together. And as the air got sucked out of the, uh, of the concrete, it would squeeze the water out and squeeze the, squeeze the air out and leave nothing but, but, the, um, but, the, but the hardened concrete, which is like rock afterwards. So anyway, so that's why why my my dams are about a thousand years old and really friggin' hard, almost like rock. And that's why and that's why a lot of the newer shit that is basically just wood plywood, just put some plywood on that and just pour some concrete in there, and that's good enough. It's like no, it's not. You know, uh, like I say, a lot of my concrete dams use asbestos and some other special fibrous materials that would actually structurally in make it a lot harder. It made it like. And I, and I think it was the size of the gravel. They got everything down where, where basically it's like one mammoth and they would pour it all at one time. It was one just like, <laughs> like, like, like you're talking about like six concrete mixers pouring constantly just <laughs> in like 30 minutes, the whole dam fills up with concrete kind of style. Like I remember some pictures of, of the things and they're out there somewhere where you can see these huge lines of piles and these machines, which, which are, which are like almost like three or 400, 500 feet long, three of them, just like just pouring and doing one mammoth quick pour and, and then they suck out the air. And what you get is you get a really hard, strong concrete. And that's why my, a lot of my dams are thinner, they're stronger, and they're a lot older than, than the new stuff, which is cracking apart and falling apart. It's like, just admit it, modern day sucks. <laughs> You know, we did some stuff back in the day, back in 1200 and 1500, that is not possible today. I mean, my dams are easily 500 years old, easily 1,000 years old. They're, some of them are actually 3,000 years old. And they look, and they don't look a day over a day over 50. Like, they are, well, I mean, I had a lot of money. So, so like, a lot of my stuff is really old and really well built because of that. And plus, it was it was a technology experiment too. A lot of it too is like is like, can we do it? Could we do it? And we did do it, and it was amazing. It was great. It was wonderful. I mean, <laughs> like it's amazing to think that those concrete, those thin wall, concrete dams are a thousand years old. Like you can see one of them, and there's a bell tower at the top, because I had a bell on it in case it failed. Not that it ever would, but. Um, and that is from the Spanish conquistador days. Spanish conquistador days. And there's a huge mammoth mine, mine nearby somewhere. Like, like you see as you walk in on, on that one video, like all that melted rock, like that's from a mine. There was a mine somewhere around there.
And probably another dam. I think that that was part of a three three part dam or two part dam or something. We filled up a valley and there's two valleys or what's called, and that was one dam. And then there was a power generation dam, so that was somewhere else. Anyway. Anyway though, but you know, I wanted to know if modern day you could guess the age of a lot of these things and 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 it's like I don't know. I mean, a lot of, like some of these dams are literally 3000 years old. 3000 years. You know, I mean, there are dams that are like 50 years old in modern day that are falling apart. Well, it's because they didn't use the, the, the vacuum sealing, um, uh, vacuum compression bonding, bonding concrete trick, which costs a lot of money. I mean, there was great big mammoth, like 400 foot wide steel plates, double chambered with going to a vacuum, to basically a freight train size vacuum system. <laughs> You know, just one, one steam train running a big pump that would suck out the air in like 20 minutes. Because it had to suck out the air before the concrete kicked, so. Anyway, though, but a lot of that concrete, you know, some of that concrete used asbestos fibers inside of it and some other fibrous materials that made it stronger. We had a lot of technology back then and um, no expense was spared, it literally, so. Anyway, that's why um, you look at these, a lot of these dams and it's like the reason why they're holding up and why they're, and why they're far older than most people think is because, um, is because of that fact. And um, any engineer or anyone who knows about concrete might have an idea of that, but <laughs> I just want to point it out. That's why um, that's why you you find these 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 concrete dams that are not like the new dams. They they uh, they're they're like they're like a third the size, and they're like ten times as strong um, because they use that system. Um, they're not going to crack apart, and I don't even know if they have rebar inside them. They might use some sort of fibrous or some sort of other thing. They had a couple tricks which, um, which made it so um, they would never fall apart possibly. They would actually literally become rock and hard and become geological things eventually. Or at least that's what they said. And I think the modern day people seem to concur. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, they're... The, they're pretty cool, and you can kind of see varying degrees of, of them. The, the the ones with the steel kind of tended to crack apart, although the uh, some of the other ones I asked them, I was like, dude, if the steel rust isn't going to damage them, some of them might actually even have titanium rebar. I think that there might have been one or two dams that actually literally have titanium rebar inside of them, so it wouldn't rust, or brass or bronze rebar or something, some sort of special rebar that won't ever rust or, or degrade. <laughs> I had... <clears throat> on a couple of my dams, just to be like, <clears throat> better. Um, I did have a couple, you know, just like my swords. Like, like if you research my swords, you'll find titanium swords, brass swords, bronze swords, jade swords. You'll, you'll find all kinds of these different, like, psycho, crazy, cool um, uh, building techniques. I really like to show off a little bit. So, anyway, so, so my dams are no different. There's a couple of dams out there with um, with titanium or some sort of gold or something like that, some sort of metal makeup, that, which which will ensure that the metal never rusts. That that is the structure of the dam, and it's vacuum sealed and harder than most substances out there. So anyway, I'm quite proud of, of all the things I did and all the things that were done and all the things that we did do. I mean, me and the the people of the 1800s and 1700s and 1500s, we made some really 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 awesome things. Some things which really haven't been matched, like Hoover Dam is nothing compared to these other dams. Of course, the, these dams were actually built in what would be considered the Germany or, or Hitler days, you know, uh, the communist days. You know how everyone like, like goes, oh, Germany sucked. It's like, no, Germany built some really, really freaking hard good things. You know, it wasn't Germany, it was the world. It was all of us. It was, it was Russia, it was, it was Germany, it was Britain, it was America. We were all working together. And we, uh, we built some ridiculously cool items. I mean, you know, when it was even Japan, we were all there. You know, we all pitched in. I pitched in, they pitched in. You know, we all came together, humanity, those people, and me came together to make some, some really cool things, some things that would last forever. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I've said it before, but, you know. So uh, I was pretty proud, and they were pretty proud, too. Nowadays, I don't know. Trap. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway, I love my dams. I've always, ha always have loved them. I love my people. We, uh, I, was, I was really proud of my people. Like, super proud. And still am. Eh, you know, I don't know. 
Anyway. Legacies. <laughs>